One who has taken over this vessel that is in now impervious to injury, but seems to be aging quite a bit. <laughs> How do we explain that? <laughs> Angel powers allow it the vessel to age. <laughs> Crystal meth. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a great season arc? Well, everything is fine except for Cass has a serious meth problem. <laughs> what? Breaking Cass. You were forced to tell me? Yeah, I don't know what you're Are you being blackmailed in some way? <laughs> really? Yeah. What's the dirty secret that they have against you? Nothing special, because I really don't know what you're supposed to do. When, when you're being blackmailed, you know what the best thing you can do is just reveal the dark secret that that person okay. is holding over you, and then they have no power anymore. So uh, what is it? Oh, fuck. Uh, yeah. It's your birthday? <laughs> I wouldn't have told us that. That's terrible. Yeah. Shame on you. Uh, Oh, what, what is the question that you've been forced to ask? Um, I would, yeah. I'm nervous, I'm sorry. Oh, that's right. It's your birthday, you're allowed to be nervous. <laughs> um, I wanted to know how far in advance you know about Spoiler, Cass's last scene. Um, and if you would try to warn us with your tweets and everything. Was I sending like secret messages? Yeah, for example, you asked for, the, for our reactions, but then deleted the tweet. <laughs> so I, I asked for reaction. Well, okay. So I asked for reactions because I thought um, that would be a good like teaser to get people really excited to see the episode. Like, what's going to happen? Why is he asking this? And then I got a message from somebody saying, um, people think that you're an asshole. <laughs> Are asking that because they think that you're just going to make fun of their feelings, which was not my intention. So then I deleted that tweet, and then people are like, when you deleted it, it meant to us that you're not coming back and that you hate the show. So I was like, I can't wait. Say the word, go ahead. <laughs> Say it. <laughs> um, I knew about Cass's death for some time. I said, oh, and, and there were the, the few people in the audience who didn't. <laughs> Sorry, breath, breath. He had bad breath in the last episode. Yes, and the whole episode hinges on Cass's halitosis. <laughs> Which feels sort of like a, a toothpaste product placement spot. It's a little bit of a sellout. Um, I knew, I don't know, maybe maybe seven weeks before we finished shooting, so a couple of months ago. Yeah. When did you know you were coming back? What's that? Spoiler. Um, I, I, it took me, a, I don't know, a while, uh, more recent, much more recent, yeah. When Jared said that was good. <laughs> A lot of people don't know this, but Jared makes all the casting decisions on the show. <laughs> That's why we all suck up to him. Yeah. Uh, thank you, and I just want to say thank you for everything you do. You're an amazing person, and you're making the world better. Just like me. Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you for being so sweet. Thank you. Hi. Hi. So my friend and I have been playing uh, Would You Rather, and we are playing the very jokes and stuff, so we wanted to know if you would rather give up your five kinds of favorite food or give up sex forever. That's the stupidest question I've ever heard. <laughs> uh, first of all, I like a lot of food, so giving up the five top favorite foods 
Oh, I mean, who would who would pick that? My friend would pick food. You, your friend pick food over sex, huh? Yeah. Really? <laughs> so we're not friends anymore now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, I guess that is true for some people. Some people are less into sex. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but really, um, I'm going to go ahead and say not the same thing that your friend picked. Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Meet you later. Uh, <laughs> hi. Hello. Okay, so first of all, Thank you. I liked your first three points. <laughs> I thought so. And my question is, um, what would you tell your 14-year-old self? Are you 14? Do I look like 14? Well, I can't really see you. That, I, I can't really see you that well. How old are you? 14. <laughs> Um, I would say, uh, be patient. I think when you're 14, you think that the world hinges on six months or a year or two years, but it really turns out projects, um, passions that you want to pursue can take sometimes decades and it's good to have a long-term perspective. Um, I, would, I would say that, maybe. Um, also, you know, have as much sex as you possibly can before people take away your favorite foods. <laughs> Hi. But not, not yet, later. <laughs> not, not, not now, but in four or five years. So I can't Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. What did you call it? The thingy? Is that what you call it? No, yes. Okay. What did you decide to go after Lucifer after the portal was not to cost anyway? I don't can you can figure it out. Why why did he go after Lucifer? Yeah, because the portal was about to cost anyway, so that was kind of worthless. She does have a point? Yeah. Okay, so, truth be told, uh, Cass is not the brightest angel. Um, no, I think, I, I, I don't think that anybody kind of knows, I think, I think it was a matter of just hunting down Lucifer and trying to stop him and not really thinking about, I mean, the portal closing, I, I think just getting rid of, of Lucifer is critical, whether in this world or in another world. So I don't know that it was the smartest move. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> but hindsight is always 20-20. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. I'm really happy to, to see you again. Uh, it's good to see you again as well. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask... Uh, You're somebody who really knows how to use the microphone. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Hi. I, I, I want to ask, uh, which cast do you prefer to play? To play? Like uh, uh, human cast, angel cast, or uh, evil cast, like Lucifer, I thought you were saying cast, like which cast members do I like? Cast, yeah. which, cast. which cast members do I like working with? Um, which is a harder question cast, to answer. Not cast. Um, I I had a lot of fun playing Lucifer cast. That was fun. Um, It was strange. It was strangely liberating. I mean, I've been playing, you know, iterations of Castiel for a long time. I've said that word twice today. Um, 
But I, I, uh, there was something very freeing about playing the Lucifer cast that I quite enjoyed. Um, it was nice to, you know, bite Ruth's ear spontaneously. They didn't, they cut that part out of the, of the show, but we did this one take where I was like, and I just bit her ear for no reason, and she went, oh. it was, it was, uh, it was a very spontaneous moment, um, and I never would have gotten to do that if I hadn't uh, been Lucifer. So, Cass wouldn't do that. Yeah, so, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hi. Hello. Um, I was wondering if you could tell me why was Kale banned from Dishes and will it be banned this year? Well, I can't tell you if it's going to be banned again this year, um, but I felt like the whole Kale motif was getting annoying. <laughs> It's funny, uh, there actually is like a real reason, reason behind that, um, which is not typical of things that I do. Um, but I, I, did the, I started with the kale thing because I thought it was weird and offbeat, and then it suddenly started to feel normalized and everybody was acting like kale was normal, and then I didn't want to have anything to do with it anymore. Does that make any sense? Yeah, okay. That's it. Hi. So, as you may know, one thing that we fans like to do to deal with unfortunate ev uh, events in the story is to write a fix it fix. And wait, 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 what, 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 huh? what, what, <laughs> what, fix it from what, what is that? Basically, a story to fix the actual story. What did you call it? A fix it fix. Fiction. Fix it fix? No, I don't know. What is, what is fix it fit? So, so what's an example of uh, a fix it fit story? Well, for example, you could come up with a um, sort of a story that fixes the ending of the finale. Um, okay. And that's basically my question. If you could come up with a sort of a short, fluffy little epilogue for the finale to soothe our broken hearts. Oh. <laughs> So what really happened uh, is that as Lucifer came out of the glowing vagina, <laughs> credit to Venetia and Krista, <laughs> Cass pushes him forcefully back into the virtual birth canal, and, <laughs> and uh, Lucifer is taken back into his early childhood where he re-experiences all of his youngest memories um, and turns into a good person. How was that? Thank you. You're welcome. You're very welcome. That's, that's what really happened. We actually shot that part. It was a, it was a mess. Hi. Pretty good. Talk to you a lot. You're Russian better than my English. Mm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not better. <laughs> I just wondering how to pronounce your last name correctly. And how does your wife call you? Me shall be the demon lady. My wife calls me dickhead. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I can't tell you. Um, uh, I get niche. Um, I get babe. And I get move. <laughs> Last name? Um, my, so we, we pronounce it Krushnik. It was probably Krushnik or um, when they, our ancestors came over to um, Ellis Island. That's my legal name, is, is Krushnik. Um, my grandmother's maiden name is Collins, which I took for my stage name, and that we, we pronounced Collins. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Put on my 
my Kira's shirt because I guess it's out of fashion. No, it's coming back in fashion, don't worry. Yes, yes, I'm going to put it up tomorrow. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask you if you could tell us a little bit about Iceland, how it was, and, and I know that you already told us the really delicious shop yep. story, yep. but um, maybe you did like typical Iceland things like riding the Iceland ponies or something like that. You're um, welcome. I did not ride an Iceland pony. Are, are you are, are you Icelandic? No. Okay. Um, there are some Icelandic people here, though. <laughs> no. Daniela lied to me. Um, okay, so we can talk honestly about Iceland. <laughs> um, we went. We went to some places that were just stunningly beautiful. Um, I had uh, I had my friend Darius, who I've been very we've been best friends since we were 12 years old, and he was with me. And uh, he took a we we had a, a tourist take a photo of us uh, next to a waterfall, and the waterfall mist caused this rainbow, and it was just like the most it was sm the most spectacular thing you've ever seen. And he posted that on uh, on his Twitter or whatever. And uh, the comments were gay, gayest thing I've ever seen. It went on and on in every language. It was really uh, an amazing review. But it was truly unbelievably beautiful. It was truly stunning. Um, and there were, there were a lot of places that we went to in Iceland that were just jaw-dropping. Like it's another, it's another world. I've never been anywhere that was that stunning. Um, it was it was pretty special, so I recommend it. Icebergs, uh, glaciers, rainbows, waterfalls, pretty nice. Yeah. Thank you. Try to avoid the shark. <laughs> it's disgusting. Okay. Hi. And it was so cool. We were we went to this. Um, <laughs> We had uh, a flight from this very small airport, and we got there, and they were like, oh, you didn't get the call? And we said, no, you didn't call us. No. And they were like, oh, right, that's right, we didn't call you. Anyway, flights delayed three hours, and we had just been dropped off, and we were like, um, okay, well, what do we do? And they said, well, you should go into town. How far is town? It's about five miles. Any way we could get in there? And this is the ticket agent. They're like, yeah, I can take you. So the ticket agent just put us in their car and drove us into town and gave us a tour. Like, that's where I was born. <laughs> right next door, that's where my wife was born. <laughs> Truthfully. <laughs> um, it was pretty cool. Hi. Hi. Um, it's a question for you. Um, you of course. Well, you've come to the right place because that's what you fielding questions right now. All right. So what do you think Of that in Castile crisis, his baby of crossing the car, the Impala. Sorry. I'm sorry. So you're asking me. How would Dean feel if he found out that Cass was cheating on him with the with the Apollo? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> if if he like came out of the bunker and into the garage and he found a Cass like like this on the on the Impala, is that what you're saying? Oh, I thought you said caresses. <laughs> I was like, that is the single weirdest question I'm ever going to get. Um, but still, I'll answer it. So, uh, uh, Dean, I'm, I was uh, I was just polishing the fender. <laughs> Unnecessary, too far. I took it too far. <laughs> Thanks for the feedback. <laughs> Good job. Good job.
I'm getting people waving at me in the front saying, please stop. Um, <laughs> if that would be a tricky one, although Dean seems to be really good with fixing the Impala, like you can have it hit by a semi, and he'll like next season will be like, rrr, rrr, all right, all better. <laughs> This is not how it works, by the way. Um, if you get hit by a semi, it's not going to be fixable. Um, that car has frame damage, technically. Um, I think if uh, if Cass crashed Baby, Dean would probably make him heal it. <laughs> like, I can see Cass being like this for hours, like, <laughs> trying to fix the Impala. Um, we did learn toward the end of the season that, that Cass is not great with mechanical stuff in cars, right? My truck broke down. Lamest excuse ever. And also, why, why does he keep stealing cars that are 30 years old? Like steal a reliable Toyota Corolla. Stop. They want me to stop so badly. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you guys. See you tomorrow.